And we're about to start the meeting. You ready? Yep. Okay. Uh, good morning. This is the morning edition of the Sherburn Board of Selectmen. We're meeting today on June 27th, and we have one member, Paul Dorensis, who will be participating remotely uh, because he is out of town. And um, we will take all votes today by a roll call in accordance with the uh, policies for remote participation. Um, David, do you want to uh, read the agenda? Sure. Thank you. First, we'll vote to approve or amend the agenda and add topics not reasonably anticipated by the chair 48 hours in advance. And we have a, a last minute item that needs to be approved, which is uh, reserve fund transfers. Uh, then we'll have public comment for 10 minutes. Then at 945, consideration of appointments regarding Leland Farms trustee appointment and then an attached list of appointments. There are probably 15 or 20 appointments. Then at 1010, um, talk about the town treasurer retirement. And then 1030, and these times are all estimates too. Uh, in the town administrator report, we'll go over the town hall hours for 4th of July, updated meeting calendar, look at upcoming meeting topics, and then any selectman reports, and set the next meeting. Okay, very good. Anything to add to the agenda, uh, Paul or Peter? I have nothing. Paul? Okay. The end of the just read this one I'm looking at is the by. Uh, hey, hey, Paul, this is this is not working well. I don't know if your phone uh, has bad reception. We we hear a clear noise, but you're coming in and out. Uh, well, I'm using a landline. No, just continue talking. Yeah, now you're fine. Uh, the agenda that you, that Dave just read was different than the agenda that I received from him earlier. What's the difference? Uh, Paul, Paul, could you just tell us what the difference is? I don't, I don't know if David's aware of the difference. Well, the, the, the item about the uh, transfers of money is on the agenda that I got. That's, that's the added item that, that David talked about. So we're gonna, we're gonna vote on whether to add that item to the agenda before we vote to approve the agenda. Okay, so can we have a, a motion to amend the agenda to add the reserve fund transfer item? So moved. Second? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, okay. So three ayes, uh, Terrence's Caruso Jaimo on amending the agenda. Okay, now do we have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second, uh, all in favor of approving the agenda, Paul? Yes. Peter? Aye. And aye, okay, the agenda is approved. At least we've accomplished something. <laughs> All right. Um, were you thinking we would do the reserve fund transfer now, David? Is that, yes. is that the idea? Okay. Yes, and sir. then do public comment. Okay. So we have a reserve fund transfer request. And um, I don't know if anybody's here to explain this, or do you want to explain this? Yeah, I can. Yeah, okay. And advisory has already um, voted these contingent on approval by the Board of Selectmen the other night. There's a town accountant for $2,025. Um, that was some amounts due to um, training of a new hire and some old vacation on the retiring uh, payroll person. Town clerk, $7,000. That's for the AccuVote tabulating device. That's a new purchase that's been discussed. And that um, is actually under the um, it's not a reserve fund transfer. It's actually that Municipal Relief Act transfer from one piece to another. And then police salaries revised due to unanticipated overtime expenses of 30000 and $2,100 for police expenses, um, basically for phone bills and other bills. And then selectman payroll, $1,000, and that's adjustments, contractual adjustments that were made during the year, and minutes clerk, overage in the minutes clerk. Okay. Any further discussion of this? And well, well, no, I just think that we need to make sure, and I think we were, David, we're in agreement to have come up with a better process on this, because here we are just a few days since last Thursday, and we've added another 10,000 to that police overtime. 
So uh, it's two, two points I'd make. One, you know, here we are with a $30,000 um, reserve fund transfer, which is on top of the $75,000 that the taxpayers approved at town meeting for supplemental funding. It's not picking on the amount of overtime that I'm talking about. It really is the process because that's a 40% increase on what we uh, projected just two months ago. And so part of my point that I'm trying to make is that I don't think we should be dependent upon our police lieutenant to do our accrual accounting for us. So uh, with that said, I, I would make a motion to approve these reserve fund transfers. Okay, thanks. And just a comment also, I noticed that some of this police expenditures, phone lines, we talked a couple of times about trying to figure out how we get some uh, efficiency in our phone plans and some yeah. consolidation of phone plans, and I wonder if that would have helped. Yeah, and we'll be checking out the new contracts from the state for July 1st. Oh, and good. And see what we can do. Yeah, that'd be good, yeah. because we get, as we've talked about before, we get dozens of phone bills and utility bills <laughs> yeah. on, on every warrant. So, yeah. Okay, um, so we have a motion. Do we have a second to that motion to approve the reserve fund transfers? Oh, I had a question. Oh, good, Paul, okay. Uh, I think we should separate the Municipal Relief Act, Relief Act from the RFTs. So in the motion, what exactly are we voting? Okay, so, so you would like to vote the Reserve Act transfer first and then vote the town clerk transfer, which is the Municipal Transfer Act? Yes. Okay, so we... Separate, just have them separately. I, I, I don't oppose them. They're just different statutory schemes. Okay, and so is that a friendly amendment, Peter? Yes, I, that's okay. great. So do we have a second with that amendment? Yes. Okay, uh, any further discussion? All in favor on the Reserve Fund transfers, Paul? Yes. Peter? Yes. And I'm yes, so three to zero on that. And now under the Intermunicipal Act, do we have a motion to approve the $7,000 for the AccuVote tabulating device to come out of the town clerk salary and the election and registration salary budget items? So moved. Second. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Aye. The rest aye. is aye. Okay, so three to nothing. Okay. So that's that's that, and and we don't, David. We don't anticipate anything further. Um, but if we do, we we have a meeting July tenth. July tenth. All the everything. We have would until have to the fifteenth to finalize everything right. in this fiscal year, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then it would just be coordinated with advisory if there's a last minute need, right? We're aware. Okay. Right. So it, they'll be doing encumbrances up to June thirtieth. Yeah. So then we'll be able to see how those impact things. Great. Okay. And you just signed those, Mike, is that correct? The f top one you sign also. Okay. And I get to date them. Okay, that looks like that's it. But this one Got it. has multiple signatures. Yep. Okay, uh, we're on public comment. Do we have anybody for public comment, Diane? Okay, we're going to ask anybody who talks to come up to the microphone at the request of our... Uh, first, we have Nancy Huss with no topic, Susan Tyler with public meeting recording. Okay, so Nancy, would you like to uh, come up to the mic, please? So Paul can hear. Thank you. Yeah, Michael, I can't hear. Uh, it, Nancy, Nancy's going to come up to the mic, Paul, so you can hear. Nancy who? Nancy Hess. Hey. Good morning, Paul. Hi. I've been catching pieces of your discussions regarding um, professional development and the funding of that. And it's been a bit troubling to me because I think the general public who hear you could take away from that that you're implying that there's wild and rampant abuse of uh, the public funds for paying for these conferences and things. So um, short of a witch hunt, I would ask you to uh, identify where you think the problem is and speak personally with the people involved and see if maybe there isn't an explanation for what they are doing that would satisfy your concern. Um, it's demeaning to imply that 
those who are elected like you're elected are not as conscious or as um, paying attention to the fiduciary responsibility they have with public money or that they don't have the same uh, ability to determine what um, programs are appropriate for them to attend uh, that will enhance their, their responsibilities and duties within their job. <coughs> I want to refer to my notes so that I don't miss any of the points that I want to make here. I know that in my case, and also in the case of the assessors and the accountant and the clerk, and I'm sure there are others, in order to be certified and to maintain that certification, we have a certain amount of coursework that we have to do that is connected to our um, professional responsibilities, and as well as an organization that we usually choose to belong to that helps promote some of that. And um, beyond the certification requirements, we take away from these very important information, updates on laws, um, new processes for things, and, um, and a networking that we don't get anywhere else because these are people doing the same kinds of things that we're doing. And I, I think that Paul was spot on in your conversation when he said you don't want to put so many hurdles in place that people aren't willing to embrace the opportunity to participate in these different programs. So trust me, I would much rather spend a day on the beach with my grandchildren than in a room, a windowless room that's over air conditioned with endless PowerPoint presentations. But we do take some valuable stuff back with us from these different conferences and seminars. <coughs> so I heard you compare it to the in-service training of the teachers at school. And that's really not a realistic uh, comparison because the teachers have a lot in common so they, there are a lot of people that can be brought in that will uh, cover areas that would be of common interest to the teachers. In this building each department has a specific skill set and specific requirements so there are a few things and we've had some in service where people have come in about ethics or records retention or the use of uh, CPR and that kind of thing but for the most part um, it, it's very specific to the department. Um, that's why there are different professional organizations for each of the departments. Um, <coughs> the, you uh, implied that the teachers um, don't have to, the children don't come so the teachers don't have to have coverage for, and that's not always true, they, they are specialized training that they go out for as well, but the teachers are getting paid for the full day even when the children aren't there to receive this training, so I don't think that that should be an issue that um, people who are getting the training for the jobs here are getting paid for service. And uh, I don't know any instance here where the job isn't done when someone is gone. I have, my experience is, that going to these conferences really takes more time away from the family than it does from my job. So um, that would be a consideration for you. Um, I think that we've been studied to death the last few years and, and we've had specific comments from both of the groups that studied us at how professional the people are that are doing the government work here. I think you want to encourage that that level of professionalism be um, maintained. I think that um, what you do there it reflects in the community in um, respect and trust. And when people hear you talk like that, I think it helps erode that trust and respect among the people in the community. So I would ask you that before you put a problem on your table to discuss it as a public problem, that you would come and talk to the people that you're questioning and see if there isn't uh, something that would satisfy your um, issues that you have with whatever is being done. 
Our jobs are not easy. Uh, eroding the public trust makes them harder. And it also encourages a lack of respect and unwarranted criticism uh, from the general public. So my request is that you please give us the courtesy of communication. Find out if there is a problem before you try to solve it. And in the process, plant a seed of doubt or mistrust in the public garden. And I know you have on your agenda today talking about the treasurer's job, but <clears throat> in the same um, category here, the treasurer collector school is in August. So whatever you do with that position, I hope that you will make it one of the requirements that they attend that school in August to help them get up to speed or um, depending on where you're people are coming from. I know Pete gave you a couple of months to get someone to work with him and I th I'm holding my breath because I'm hoping that he'll have time to spend with whoever you put in that place. Um, Pete's not a cookie cutter treasurer. He's done a wonderful job keeping us from having to go to quarterly billing and all that kind of paying high borrowing costs and things like that <coughs> by his moving money the way it needs to be moved to cover us through dry spells and all that. So he has a great deal of institutional knowledge. I'd like him to have the opportunity to share with whoever is going to be coming into that position. So I thank you for your time and I hope the comments are helpful. Thanks, thanks for the comments, Nancy. I think that's a subject we're going to be talking more about. There was no intent in our discussion to, and I don't think we did single out any office yours or anyone else's um, or any specific examples what we were looking at was a control process and we're going to keep talking about the control process because it is public money and I don't think it's wrong to have someone justify spending it but as you pointed out there are good justifications for a lot of what is spent on professional training I don't think anybody up here said that that was something that they wanted to cut off or that there were abuses in specific instances <coughs> we're looking about putting more controls on that process because we're a town with you know as you know significant budget constraints and that's what we're you know what's we're elected to do is to look for opportunities like that so I if you took that in a personal way it certainly wasn't intended personal to you or really to any other town employee my biggest concern is the public image and when things come across your table where there isn't the understanding behind it that the basic community has that sometimes a message comes out and I was listening to you over the TV in your conversation I thought gee someone listening to this who does not have the inside knowledge that we all have could take away that there is a problem and I think that most people here are very respectful of how the money is spent on that kind of thing here so well it's good to know thank you <coughs> who's next Sue Susan, could you come up and? I still have time, right? We're gonna let we're gonna let you talk. Yeah, <laughs> even, even though it's over time, we 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 gave Nancy a tre treasurer's consideration on uh, I mean a uh, Collector. collector's consideration on uh, extra time. So right. go ahead. Susan Tyler, this is scary. You're giving me a microphone. Um, scary for who? Everybody, <laughs> everybody. Uh, in what I would like to ask the town is if the selectmen can look at creating a policy of some sort where the regulatory boards in town, regulatory as in regulating someone's property, uh, be it the Board of Health, the ZBA, the Conservation Commission, the Planning Board, whether those meetings are somehow recorded. I don't know what the contract is with the, with the Dover Sherburn Cable TV. It seems we do this meeting or if we need to, the planning board has had meetings um, recorded, certainly over the Pulte properties. But there's numerous towns around us where all those meetings are recorded so that the public does have an opportunity to look at that, to see what is going on. And it also, you know, there's been this big push in town that we've, you know, um, the words over and over again, an open and transparent government. Well, this would be a way to open it up so everybody can see what's going on. Um, and I certainly think from a, um, uh, a safeguard for, it would be a safeguard also for the residents and then also for the town that there is a record of what takes place. And I know um, my personal history on the Conservation Commission, when I first got on board in 2009, 
they always were recording their meetings. They had the tape recorder and they were recording the meetings. I went out, I had my knee replaced, one of my knees replaced with a total, and missed two meetings. And when I came back, they were no longer recording the meetings. So there was no record, and the best I could get was apparently there was a, an issue that came up with a he said, she said, so they just don't record anymore. But it's also for the Board of Health, the Planning Board, the ZBA. I think it would be very helpful for the, all the residents and also the town. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, we're going on to um, consideration of appointments. That was, that was all the public comment, right, Diane? Okay. Yes. So David, you want to walk us through this? Paul, you still there? Uh, yeah, I'm having a very hard time here. Um, I don't, okay, I mean, people are, people are talking into their microphones, um, and, and we just had folks at the microphone, so um, I'm not sure why there would be a problem with hearing. I, I can hear that there are people talking, but I did not, can't get all the words. Well, maybe it'll improve. Maybe what? It will improve. Okay, good. We're, we're talking from the table now. You want to start with Leland Farms? Um, as you suggest, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Um, there was a memo that didn't make it into um, your packet, so I'll just read off what it is. Um, Corey Lincoln is the current uh, appointee to the Leland Farms Board of Trustees. <coughs> Excuse me. She has submitted paperwork requesting reappointment to the Board of Trustees, specifically stating that her request is de to be considered only if no other individuals come forward. <coughs> we have not received any other request to fill this appointment. As requested, a few residents were informed that this item has been scheduled for today, and Ms. Lincoln was also informed but unable to attend. As for what entity actually has responsibility for making the single seat appointment to the five member board of trustees, I've discussed this extensively with council. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> and after reviewing um, all town documents related to the matter, the facts are the Sherburne Community Housing Corporation was an entity that existed in Sherburne and was responsible for appointing someone to the single seat. SCHC, in its demise, formally turned over all funds to the town for the purpose of spending those funds on Leland Farms improvements. All funds that were turned over to the town <coughs> turned over to the town were accounted for. <coughs> I'm sorry, and completely expended as intended. After several years of no annual report filing with the state, the corporation expired and was at that point officially defunct. There are no documents that specifically assign the authority for appointing this position from SCHC to the Board of Selectmen. One party has contested the Board of Selectmen's authority to appoint this position, believing that the authority would fall back on the trustees to make the appointment. Town Council has been in touch with the Complainants Council, and Town Council can argue that the Board of Selectmen has a greater right to appoint this position because there is proof of the SCHC's decision to turn over all available funds to the town, Several members of SCHC were also serving on the Sherburn Affordable Housing Committee at the time, thanks, which was out appointed by the selectmen, and, but that, that entity also became defunct, and the town of Sherburn is still the property owner of the land the buildings sit on. So what we see is there's a clear intent that the town was to continue to be linked to Leland Farms, as there is nothing clear in any documents, including the trustee formation documents that removes the town's responsibility of appointing the single seat to the trustees. Town Council will continue to correspond with the Complainants Council, but there's no expectation that anything will be produced that challenges the Board of Selectmen Authority to make this appointment. So basically now it's a discussion on how you want to handle that appointment. Okay. Does anybody <coughs> have any input on this subject? Well, I know that <coughs> we've received emails back when I sat in that chair <coughs> from some of the residents who were concerned about um, who was on the board of trustees and so forth. Or, and, and we were trying to get clarity of this, and David's gone through what he just read here to get some clarity of whose responsibility to appoint a person and so forth. So, uh, you know, I think that's great uh, that we have this better understanding. I think there's still other things. I mean, in this process, uh, we just uh, asked Diane to give me the, uh, I guess we have a ground lease and we have, um, a master deed and so forth. Mm -hmm. 
And I didn't really read those word for word, but I looked for the important parts. And so I have some questions about how the funding takes place to the town and really from sitting up here worried about making sure the town gets the funds that by agreement with whatever entity is in place is supposed to be providing. And I think there's some confusion on that still. Um, and I don't know how that confusion has occurred, but there is confusion of what we sh what the town should be provided and what it should be used for and so forth. So I think we need to look into that further. Um, that's a little off topic from this uh, uh, appointment process. Uh, I think w what David's described at this stage is absent um, others stepping up to the plate for the time being, the solution of Corey until such time that somebody comes forward that might, might work out for everybody uh, seems to make some good sense here. I have, a question, I have a question about the recommendation to appoint Corey. She is currently the selectman or the town's representative to the Board of Trustees? Yes. And I thought the general rule was if a successor is not named, an appointee just stays in office Under until state law, the appointment would continue until. So why are we being asked to reappoint her? Um, I mean, you can choose not to reappoint her. And then under state law, it would just continue. But it just, we try to make sure all appointments are updated and instead of, so nobody can challenge what the, whether the appointment is legitimate or not and we have to keep answering yes it's legitimate under state law it keeps rolling forward but on the books it still shows it expired it's up to you yeah I, 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 I get that I just right. I guess I'm wondering if the objective here is to find somebody else to fill that seat whether we wait until we find the somebody else and then do the the reappointment and in the meantime Corey continues to serve yeah. basically until the reappointment pursuant to state law or until right. she resigns. Yeah, legally it would be in a holdover, what they call it, and it would be, um, she would continue until she resigned or you appointed somebody else. Or you could appoint contingent on, um, you know, without a year expiration. Don't appoint her to a year, ex um, but appoint her to the point could, that you find I somebody else. Here? Paul, you have input? Yeah, the, the rule about a public officer holding over doesn't necessarily apply to a private trust. And this is a condominium trust. And so there was, there is an issue. And um, I understood that there was a deadline by which this had to be clarified for some external reasons relating to the operations of, of that trust. So I'm not sure the rule about public officers holding over applies to a private trust. I think he's saying from our What's standpoint. What's the external deadline? For their purposes, for the trustees' purposes. That's what Paul just referred to. I think they had a date of, um, you might want to talk to Mr. Nellis. He, yeah, well, he was but in what, it what's your about understanding? Um, I believe Corey, said her appointment had expired this month. So she was last appointed three years ago? Is that the idea? I, don't, I, don't, I think it was longer than that. I think she has been, I don't know if it was a definite appointment or when the last time it was appointed. Okay. So. Well, I think it is important that we have somebody on that board. I know you've made some efforts to get someone else. I, I hope you would continue to make efforts to find somebody else mm -hmm. um, no we, we it's still it's still posted that it's a vacancy you may need to, to do some recruiting <coughs> and we we try you've been doing some yeah okay yeah all right do, do any of the residents have some comments i know you probably are interested in this subject go ahead and, and give your name please hey, hey mike can you talk in that and i'm gonna turn the microphone Pat, if I bring this closer, Paul, maybe you can hear better, you think, or? Um, from the PA system, are we, un are we under a speaker here? Michael? Yeah. I can, can I hang up and recall? Because I, I, this line doesn't seem to be very good. I'm going to try and. You said you wanted us to recall you, Paul? No, he wants to hang up and recall. Okay. <laughs> yes, please hang up and recall. We'll, we'll wait for you to come back on. Okay, thanks.
Sorry, we're just Still great. technical difficulties. Yeah. <coughs> it's not hanging up. Just push that little circle button. Push the circle. Why, yeah. why is it flashing? It's still connected. flashing like it's connected. Hello? Paul? Oh. You're yeah. dialing out? Well, I didn't intend to. If you would like to make a call, Yeah, I thought we had this. Help. Sounds better than Paul. I thought we had this now. Talk to that guy. <laughs> hey, Pat, could you come up here, please, and take care of this so we can get this show on the road? Well, I did. <laughs> it wasn't turning off. Okay. It's off right now. It, it really is off. No, it's not even connected. <sighs> Yeah, no, no. Is that coming out of that for some reason? All the connections are in. All the connections are in. But All right. that should give you a dial tone. And it's not. What did you do here? I took care of it. You <laughs> <laughs> didn't want to hear what Paul had to say anyway. Put that back in, Pat. You can take it out and put it in. If David got it jammed the wrong way or something. You have trouble pulling it out? No, wait a minute, wait a minute. And it's got one of those little plugs, uh, yeah. those little things. Well, all you had to do was just shoot it off. There you go. Okay. Okay. Right. See, don't touch it. It's alive. Right. And the next time we have problems, you come over. Yep. Okay. Has, has Paul called back? No, but... Busy. Whoa, wait a minute. Well, what's the problem we just had? Yep. Yeah. All right, well, we're either going to oh, continue boy. this meeting without Paul or we're going to adjourn the meeting. Well, just wait a minute. I think there are things we need to do. I don't understand. It looks like technology from the 80s. Oh, I tell you, I've never had this problem before. <laughs> okay, now, don't touch anything. Well, what are we doing with the microphone? It just did it just go off again? Yeah. yeah. The it's not going to turn on until he calls in. It's not going to turn on until he calls in. Nope. It should be on. You get the idea of what you're going to say, I guess. I don't know if I should say too much or too little. It's it's. Uh, <laughs> I got a lot to say. Sorry, folks. Keep it, yeah, keep it simple. Yeah, I'm sorry. This is always going to be four. What number is I'll call it? What number is it? David's got him. I'm going to unplug those because they're totally useless. Huh. Why is this? Hey, Paul, can you call back in? He's calling the phone. Right. No, it just yeah. went off again. Try it, try it again. Wait, well, wait a minute. Well, he's not going to get in if this thing is not going to. If there's a remote access well, training let me, let me session, I think we would pay to have somebody go. Yes, we to would. Take that course. Let's get Nancy to go. <laughs> She'll figure it out. It's not. Can you hear him now? Do you want to just mic, mic a cell phone? Try talking to him. Paul, would you speak up? Okay, good. We're going to go with the old-fashioned way with a cell phone. Um, all right, and, and sorry, sir. C can you state your name again? And yeah, my name is Michael Nellis, um, 11 Leland. Okay. Um, thanks for the opportunity. I'm not much of a public speaker, but I'll try to get to the point and be clear. Um, I'm, I'm one of the trustees. Um, looking, I know the community is basically looking for a, a change because of the financial status that we're in. Um, we have no money in our reserves, and the, uh, the condominium association um, basically puts all of their support um, through the trustees and a management company. And um, our money's been mismanaged since day one. And um, we've accrued a debt. We're paying a debt off of close to $100,000 now. And um, 
some of these things are were unforeseen, but some a lot of them also had to do with just money being mismanaged. And um, the ba the bottom line is that the community is looking for a change. Um, this is one one of the steps that this this can happen is basically pleading to the uh, selectmen for a change um, with, a, with a new trustee. Um, so. Um, I mean, I can get into a lot of examples of things, but you know, just through like ne basic neglect and um, neglect of the property. Um, we've had a company that stole money from us, and um, it, it just the list just goes on. But um, today, um, you know, I, I know that you're looking for somebody to replace, you know, as a possible replacement uh, for Corey. Um, I know Ellen here in this room, Ellen Heffern, would um, she would take the position um, um, at least. On a temporary basis because the change that we're looking for is uh, pretty immediate and um, we um, I just found out about this meeting a couple of days ago and I was able to put together a petition I have some names here of just people in the community who signed um, you know the, um, for a, a change and um, if you don't mind I can hand that to you sure yeah These are all residents. Of, yes, of yes. The these are all residents, and um, I wasn't able to catch up with everybody, but um, there's a good list of um, residents there on that sheet. So, um, you know, we're in trouble, and we need help and a good mind, somebody that knows what they're doing. I know Ellen here. I've spoken with her a lot of times. She has a good mindset in terms of how to make positive changes and how to restructure um, the community and, and start building forward instead of going on the same course of, of, of debt and um, mismanagement and um, um, hopefully we can get something done. And so uh, so there's f there are five trustees, is that right? There's five altogether. Five. And, so, right. and the other four are elected by the residents, is that right? Right, right. There's, um, there's two market unit owner trustees that are elected by market unit owners and two affordable unit owner trustees that are elected by affordable unit owners. and then. Then there's the fifth, which is the town elected trustee, and uh, the the position is for every three years, and it, um, it it's supposed to you know every three years a new trustee. Um, well, the terms are for three years, and uh, you know it just seems a little bit strange that this one's been here for 14 without you know any contest or any questioning or anything anyone to be held accountable for, to and um, no one to answer to. So um, we just you know, we hope that this is like the first step in moving forward. Okay, and I mean, and I understand. I mean, we hit, we sounds like we have the right to appoint one of the five trustees. So I'm not sure you do a change in the one could well it, it could will, could effectuate everything that you're looking for. It, it will um, to the to the point where three of the tr of the five trustees are they vote along the same lines a lot and they do a lot of things together um, in terms of thinking and supporting the management and not wanting to be more involved and so if there's just if one of the the three chain it goes or you know um and we're able to find somebody new with a new mindset everything can change right then and there peter paul do you have any comments or questions well no i mean i'm just I think it's important for the town to try to facilitate helping Leland Farms and the issues it's dealing with, mm -hmm. but at the same time protect its interests. And its interests, I think, have somehow been, by that I mean it, the town's interests, um, at least from what I read. For example, you talked about, I, I, I've seen an email from you, and I appreciate that. I passed it on to David and had other emails from um, Louisa. If, if I say that wrong, I apologize. But uh, so, so looking at this, you, you know, you talked about maintenance issues, the, you know, the exterior, or rotten wood, or you know, things like that. When I look through the documents that we have, I see three elements of funding that's supposed to come to the town. One is a base rent, and it's like a thousand bucks. One is some, uh, it's called a, a maintenance reserve fund or a maintenance fee that's so much per month it's supposed to be adjusted but it was never adjusted for CPI and it had it been adjusted for CPI the town probably would have had 50,000 bucks more in the coffers available to use Th those funds are from what I read available to use for the facilities and the roadway 
which I've seen some, I think you've complained about the condition of the facilities and the roadway. That fund is, from the agreements I read, and I may be reading them wrong, is destined for that. There's separately a maintenance fund, which is to pay for the well and all, you know, all of the treatment of the well, and that's been fairly significant over the years. And it's unclear to me how we've, whether the, that's come into the town and whether the funds have been used. But the point is, it's a vehicle for Leland Farms and the residents to put money to the town. The town is, a, in essence, the way I interpret it, the custodian of those funds to be used to keep the water working well and tasting you know, healthy and also the facilities up to date, roadway and facilities. So I, I'm missing where somehow it seems like that might have gotten sidetracked a little bit here mm -hmm. based on your complaints and based on what I know about the funds flowing into the town. So, so that's something that's part of this whole process from where I sit. One is we, we, we certainly want to have a town's representative as part of your trustees that brings perspective and also helps make the place work better and sounds like it needs to work better in some fashion. It, it does. And that's not to pick on anybody who's been serving in any way. It's just that there's a problem that needs some solutions that it, won't happen overnight necessarily. And I think what we're dealing with here is we want some, we, absent uh, somebody else right now able to step up on the town's best interests outside of the community, I guess is the way I look at it, mm -hmm. the, the holdover approach or whatever reappointment approach that we take that's contingent on some future uh, replacement makes a lot of sense to me because it forces us to make sure that we're doing what we said we're supposed to be doing. And by doing that, it's in everybody's best interest, particularly the residents of Leland, the Leland community. Um, I, I know Ellen works in the town clerk's office and she served on advisory committees as well. So I'm, I know that she could um, communicate with the, with the selectmen very well. Appreciate so, that. Um, yeah. And in, in terms of the, the money that you're talking about that goes in for that, the fund um, that's collected by the town, a lot of that has basically been used up on, on the water system that um, we've had a, it was close to $100,000, a new water tank that was replaced. Um, it, was a, it was a concrete water tank that was replaced with a metal water tank. And come to find out, there was really nothing wrong with the concrete water tank. It was something that the, the company that services just didn't discover something very small. And it was, you know, I mean, nobody's been held accountable for any of these things. And I know I can just keep going on. I think, feel like I'm ranting, but, um, you know, hopefully, um, you know, something can be done today. And, and if it, it is, I'd really appreciate it. And I know the community does as well. So, so uh, is Ellen a resident of the, she, she, she is a resident as well. Uh, but yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. So, so one concern, was that? She's not an owner, owner. she's a resident. But she, You're a resident, not an owner, okay. I mean, it could, because one slight concern I would have, and it has nothing to do with you or qualifications or anything, is mm -hmm. to have an independent mm -hmm. voice for the town as somebody who doesn't live there. I, I was, I was going to wonder if, you know, either David or Peter or somebody would, would be willing to do it in, on a holdover until somebody else could be appointed. I mean, I think it needs somebody who has that attention to financial details that, that you guys would bring or somebody else who's similarly financially astute. It's just that we haven't found anybody who can do it. I don't, I don't know if you have I don't want well, to Well, I think that's a good either. idea. I, I, I'm not anxious to, <laughs> and I don't know that if I can actually serve well, as, as, as a, a member of the selectmen. As a member of the selectmen. Yeah. But, you know, I'd love to see David do it. David's, the accordion style job description gets bigger and bigger, but I mean, is that something that, that you feel it would be productive to do that well, temporarily? I, I don't think it would be productive based on okay. the duties. I think we spoke at one time that it could be a possibility, but the needs that they have are, are more time and spending time there takes away from other things. So the, the needs are time in what sense? You mean to go back through books and things to straighten things out on sort of a one-shot basis? I think it needs more attention, yeah. I, I don't think it's a go, attend one meeting a month thing. Okay. At this point, but. Okay. But I mean, it, it is a five-person board, so I guess that's what I'm struggling with a little bit too, is 
there seems to be a lot riding on the selectman position, and yet there right. are four other trustees who presumably devote some time, have some probably better insight into what's going on over there than a selectman trustee could be or a town trustee could be. Right. Um, so I don't understand. Ellen, maybe you've got some insight on that. Can I jump in my yeah, please do. Yeah, please do. Thanks. Thank you, Mike. I'm not good at public speaking either, but give it a shot. Ellen Heffron, 3 Leland Drive. Uh, as I said, I'm not an owner. Uh, my sister owns it. Um, but I've lived there on and off for 14 years. I have three kids in the school system. Uh, I was born in Sherburne, as were my father and grandfather and great-grandfather. So I'm very tied to Sherburne. Uh, I think to put in a nutshell what Mike um, was trying to say is that we do need more fiscal responsibility. Um, we need uh, a different viewpoint. There have been a lot of biased decisions and money wasted on things that didn't really need to be done. Um, so we need like prioritization in um, in spending money. Right now, I mean, we have no reserves left. Uh, everything um, that's collected in the form of monthly condo fees is already spent, and it's already spent for months, if not years. Um, you know, we're going to have to repay, have six roofs. Is it six, six, five or six roofs repaired, um, or f just totally redone because they're all leaking? So that's another at least 65,000. So we're looking at a really big assessment. Uh, so I, I think the bottom line is that um, we just, we need somebody with uh, sense and fiscal responsibility. Um, you know, because we're looking, we could potentially have to file for bankruptcy. You know, that's been mentioned, and we don't want to do that. We want to get ourselves, you know, back to where we started. Um, but, and the other thing is that the other four trustees get, have to run every three years. And this one, nobody was aware that, you know, it was up for reappointment. I've never seen it listed anywhere. Um, I have... You know, I'm on the Farm Pond Advisory Committee, and you know, I so I, and I see all the uh, positions that need to be filled, um, but we've n I've never seen that one, uh, and we would be happy to find somebody with the qualifications. We just don't need somebody who votes continuously <coughs> with people who have their own in with trustees who have their own interests, um, and you know, are are not community oriented. We need somebody who's community oriented. Uh, and I, I'm, for what it's worth, I'm happy to put my name out there. I do have a uh, degree in finance. Um, I, I feel like I could be impartial and I could prioritize. Uh, like I said, I have three kids who uh, live there also and I want, it to, I want to make it nice for them. Like I said, I was born in Sherbourne, and I'm happy that my kids are able to live here. Um, you know, we're just looking, we're not look here to bash, we're, we're just looking, for, we need a change. After 14 years, we need a change. And like the, like the other trustees who have to be voted in or get voted out if they don't do a good job, we feel like this one should have to go the same route. Okay. I saw other hands or comments. Anybody else out there? Nancy. <coughs> I was just curious. Sorry, go to a mic. Yeah, I think, I'm sorry, if you could please talk into a mic. And Paul, you're still there, right? You can hear? I'm not enough. What? Not enough. Not enough. Oh. Uh, coming from a collector's perspective, I'm just wondering if some of the finance problem may be from uh, whether or not you're getting the revenues you're supposed to. Does everybody 
pay their share of condo fees on time and keep you solvent in that way. Yes, they do. Is this on? I think it's on, yeah. They do. Uh, we were having one issue, um, but that's been cleared up. Um, but uh, the thing is, it's affordable. It's, there are, you know, 10 affordable units, and the condo fees are really above an affordable limit. And, you know, we're looking probably at a special assessment. Correct? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, the fees have basically gone up since day one. I think the affordable units were paying $151 a month um, at, in, the, in 2000. They're paying 365 now today. So it's really gone to the point where, you know, in the, in the market unit, rate, they're paying well over, I think, over 450 And um, I think Louisa's unit, she pays 650 a month. So it's just... I mean, th th these are these are more than just bills. They're you know they're serious charges to people's finances. And, and that, those so. monies go to the condo association and right. are managed by the condo association. That's right. Which is ultimately <coughs> managed by these five trustees, I presume. Exactly. Right. Yes. Okay. Yes. And, and versus what? And, and out of that, some monies go to the town every month. Is that correct? Out of that? Right. Yeah. I, and okay. some, I, I believe it's five, is it $5,000 a year? I yeah, 5200 yeah. a year, yeah. not adjusted for the CPI. Right. Yeah. 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 And if I can just say, I think it needs to be flipped around. I think we need trustees who can spend within a budget as opposed to, I think we're collecting enough. We don't have any amenities and we don't have a pool. We don't have trash collection. We don't have... You know, we have landscaping, plowing, um, so, and whatever maintenance we need. So, so what I'm really hearing, I think, is that there's enough residents willing to select trustees who don't pay attention to a budget that you've gotten in trouble. Because, or at least that's your view of things. Because it's, again, one out of five trustees can't tip the balance if, if right. there's, unless there's two others who. We've, I think we've had, we've had a lot of turnover within the trustees. Um, and then there's also within the market unit um, there's seven market units and a lot of them just don't have interest in serving so it just became more of a issue of you know who's you know the, some of these elections there's there's nobody running against anybody so it's the same people um, the affordable unit owners have you know have been more interested in trying to make a change but basically been outvoted on everything okay Paul do you have any input or questions well I, I, I don't think I can give a fair hearing to these comments because I'm only hearing every other word and so I wonder if we have to take action today or is there an opportunity for me to try and see this online is this being filmed yes yeah I mean I, I w yes what it's being filmed. it is being filmed yeah right we're, we're on we're on camera um, All right, I can only hear like every other word, and it sounds like there are you know, important points being made on every side. My two cents is that the town's interest is very different from the interest of the other, the other trustees, and, and so there's inherently going to be a, a bit of a conflict situation, number one. Number two, uh, the town should be represented. Number three, Corey has said that she doesn't want to continue to serve and would like very much to have someone else uh, uh, come forward and, and represent the town. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to, to see a change in that position because that's what Corey seems to want. But in, in the meantime, uh, we need to have representation. Yeah, I'm, I'm sort of seeing it the same way. I'm wondering if b between your uh, difficulties hearing everything out of fairness and also uh, we're going to meet on July 10th, I think. Um, between now and then, um, David has a more concerted effort to recruit somebody among many of the talented people we have in this town who have some fiscal ep expertise. Um, you know, I, I would be open to considering a resident of that development, too, who has the right background if they, you know, if, if, if they would represent the town's interest, but I do want to think a little more about that, and I guess I would echo Paul's suggestion that we put this off until the 10th of July for a decision, 
and not appoint Corey in the meantime. Uh, Peter, do you have yeah, any? Yeah, no, I, I think that's the right approach. I think we need to do a little more homework, see if we can recruit somebody that would serve the town's needs while also uh, assisting the dealing with the challenges that the, the trustees are facing right now. So that, that's what I'd like to see us do. So, okay, uh, all right, I'm good with that. And Grace has a question. I'm on that um, town center committee, okay, and in, in that role I've been trying to gather the town's expenditure for water and sewer in all places, and I spoke yesterday with the management company that manages Leland, and she said something about a new septic system, and she started giving me numbers. I think that I would expand the topic to understanding the role of the management system and what they're paid and what they're responsible for. I have no idea what the answer to that is. I'm just... Yeah, and it's, it's a difficult sharing. question. It's, 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 that's obviously something the residents are, want us to get at. I mean, that's a private condominium right. with a board of trustees that w we don't really have any say in who the management is, other than to the extent we have one out of five votes. Right. Except that it, it may be a component of the problem. I have absolutely no. Sounds like some people think it is a component of the problem. Yeah. 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 And um, is it a legal requirement that a board of trustees make the decisions, or may they choose someone with professional skills that can make? It's yes. You can choose someone with professional okay. skills. It's um, Mass General Laws 183A. It, can appoint a management company to I, I make decisions. Well, they already have a management company. Yeah, I think Grace is saying they have a management yeah. company. She just was questioning some of the things that were going on based on what she it's talked about. It's the same about. company that does Woodhaven. Yeah. One conversation. I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but, <laughs> but everybody seems to be kind of nibbling at this from different sides and getting to the same point. So, And Peter, you had a comment? Could you? Yeah. Thank you. My concern is twofold. One, you're talking about not reappointing uh, Corey Lincoln, and yet I think Paul has made a quite valid point that this is not a municipal position, uh, it's a trustee position, and by not appointing, it's, it could be called into question whether or not that position retains any authority. So I think you might have a problem there. Uh, I, I don't follow you, Peter. What? Paul, Paul, Paul Lorenzo has suggested that this is not a municipal position and therefore does not continue upon non-appointment. Non in other words, under state law, the state law is not going to affect this trustee position uh, because it's not a municipal position. And so, yeah, so, I think what we, so it does not continue just because you haven't reappointed the person in the position does not continue. Essentially, the position could be seen as vacant. I, I think we agree with that. I, I think we, we would say it's seen as vacant at least until July 10th when we meet again. Okay. And, as long and as you're, we're know, trying, no, you're knowingly doing that, uh, what, yeah, what's the that trustee, which puts the trustee vote in a two, you know, two, two, four, two affordable and two market votes, it's pretty much sounds like it freezes them at that point. Yeah. But the other thing that bothers me about more than anything else is that this is turned into virtually a hearing with only one side being heard. Um, and and that, that concerns me. Uh, Corey is not here. Uh, the market rate uh, trustees are not here. The other trustees are not here. And um, I, I just really feel that, you know, if you're going to be going through that process, uh, there certainly should be wider notice and, and more representation of uh, positions and opinions and and proof of, of items that are being presented i really am concerned when i hear someone say that we've had money stolen from us that's that's serious and it's the first time i ever heard that and uh it, it concerns me that something like that can be said and not explored further or explained so i i think if you're going to do this it has to be in a much broader scope if uh, if all these issues are going to be raised in this simple context of appointing a trustee. So, David, how was this publicized, this session? Is Corey aware of this? Yeah, Corey, Corey was, knew this, that we were going to take this up for a while, but I think she's out of town. What about the other residents? Um, I'm not sure how we actually notify them, but... So why don't, we, why don't we notify them of July 10th that it will be on the agenda? Yeah, but um, I think we emailed somebody and expected it to be go to all the trustees and the residents that but, they're but not Pete, talking about a lot Pete, of people. Peter raised a good point. I'm, I'm not sure that uh, I was interested in having a vacant position. I think I'd rather see us re reappoint Corey if we can't do the holdover, since the term, I think, expires June 15th, effectively. 
in, in, until such time as we come back in July 10th with uh, someone else that we might be able to fill that role. But that's all. I, so I looked at Paul, who's serving as our legal counsel a little bit today, what his thoughts are on, on leaving the position vacant versus appointing Corey until such time as we find a replacement to represent the town's interests. Yeah, you're on. We're looking for your input. Uh, I, I heard someone, I don't know who it was, uh, uh, remind me that I, I don't think the, uh, the holdover provision may not apply to to a private trust, and therefore I think the more prudent course is first to put this thing over, but secondly, to hold the status quo as it is, which I think means that we have to affirmably take action on, on keeping Corey in that position until we can find someone to replace her. The, the problem with being on the phone here is I don't know who were the, all the speakers who were speaking, and, um, and I couldn't hear all that they said, but I, I think we should not leave the town unrepresented on the board of trustees and therefore i think we have to appoint someone today yeah although paul if by that logic the town's been unrepresented for 10 years so i'm not sure another you know two weeks makes a big difference well well if if the idea is that corey was appointed for a three-year term and has held over under a provision that doesn't allow her to hold over which was the premise then there's actually been a vacancy. And I don't know what that does to decisions that have been made or anything else. Um, I think we did have some advice that said that Corey uh, remained in office or remained in that position until reappointed. I, I don't think I'm prepared to appoint Corey even on the interim at this point. I think we've gotten, you know, we've gotten ourselves into a, a real discussion here with a lot of different sides. And I, I guess I don't appreciate the urgency of having to do something before July 10th. Maybe. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but um, I, I think status quo is probably just not doing anything. That's how I see it. Does the do the trustees have any scheduled meetings between now and July 10th? There's there's nothing scheduled right now. Um, the meetings are supposed to be the third Wednesday of the month, but um, so um, for some reason it, we, we had a June unit owners meeting and. Um, it was at the end of May, so um, I would assume it goes in July. We'll have it probably on the third week of July. So the objective would be to appoint somebody by the next meeting, which is the third week of July. Um, Nancy has a comment or a question. <coughs> yeah, I will repeat your comment if it's a short comment. Uh, can't you use the same logic if it's, if it's not a municipal position? then Peter's not at threat being a selectman, and he's already looked into some of this. I would think he'd be a logical interim appointment to hold that seat if Corey wants out. They want fresh representation, then if Peter would be willing, why not appoint him temporarily until you can appoint someone else? I would prefer to come back on the 10th with Paul present. I believe he'll be back at that point make sure all the residents are notified as opposed to just the the trustees and um try to bring forward a couple of names to that meeting to make an appointment at that meeting I, that's how i'm thinking of right. it but I, you know peter and paul have yeah <clears throat> i mean i guess i think if we're if you're comfortable i can be comfortable that the status quo continues until july 10th and even if it doesn't the world is not going to end. I'm not interested at this stage to be on another committee of some sort. Yeah. Um, but I certainly will be glad to pay very close attention to how this goes forward yeah. so, okay. and represent the board in that manner. Okay, so, so uh, Paul, I th think the consensus here would be that we hold this over until you're here on the 10th of July, that we re-notice or, or notice uh, the abutters, uh, or the, the residents, I should say, directly. Uh, we give Corey another uh, notice of the July 10th session, and that 
for the time being, we do nothing. We don't reappoint Corey. We don't conclude that she's not a trustee. We simply just leave things the way they are now um, and the way they've been for 11 years um, and, and move forward. Are you okay with that, Paul? I, I would like to have uh, some opinion from town council on a couple of things. One is uh, the, the status of holdover trustees and number two, Number two, what, Paul? I think we lost him. Are oh, you? I think we lost him. Yeah. Did your phone just run out of batteries? No. Okay. Dial him back. He's still there. Oh, hey, Paul. Can't hear. Yeah, we can't hear you either. Paul, oh. is he moving? What has he done? How strong is your signal? I'd like to ask. I think so I heard yes. It was so clear a second ago. <laughs> All right, so we're, we're going to get a town council opinion on uh, the status of holdover trustees. And I think, Paul can, I think Paul can email David about the other town council opinion he wants so we can move on and move through the meeting. Okay? All right, so we're going to move on to the next item. But thanks for showing up, and, and thanks for your Thank speaking. You. Emails and you are a good public speaker. <laughs> it was very clear. Thank you. Good job. Thank, Thank you, too. <laughs> Um, so uh, we have another list of appointments here, um, and I don't, unless you think these are controversial and we should wait for, for Paul, Peter, I would suggest that we can just get through these, can't we? Yes. So this is basically the, the same list that we brought last time yep. um, with the addition of the two the bottom, bottom ones that are in italics. Yep. Yes. So um, how about I just read through them all? Yeah, is, is Paul aware of the two bottom ones? Uh, yes, but okay. I, I hadn't. Okay, and, and hasn't, hadn't the, here. hasn't expressed any objections? No. Okay, thanks. Um, there is a Campbell to the Disability Advisory Committee for a term of three years expiring June 15th, 2017. I also want to add that none of these are contested race. Yeah, okay. Uh, Michael Kickham and Kitty Sturgis to the Elder Housing Committee, each for a term of three years expiring June 15th, 2017. Jacqueline Martin and Patricia LeBlanc to the Farm Pond Advisory Committee, each for a term of three years expiring June 15th, 2017. Tim Morrissey, Fire Chief, Ellen Hartnett, BOH Administrator, Ed Wagner, CMD Director, Rick Thompson, Police Chief, David Williams, Town Administrator, Diane Moores, Assistant Town Administrator, David Curtis, Elder Housing Representative, Karen Jewell, COA Director, Barbara Brown, Pine Hill School Principal, to the, all to the Local Emergency Planning Committee, that's the LEPC, each for an indefinite term expiring upon resignation or replacement. David Williams, Town Administrator, to the MBTA Advisory Board for an indefinite term expiring upon resignation or replacement. Bruce Jamerson to the Personnel Committee for a term of one year expiring June 15th, 2015. Jennifer Searle to the Sherburn Arts Council for a term of two years expiring June 15th, 2016. Margaret Robinson to the Town Forest Committee for a period of three years expiring June 15th, 2017. David Williams, Town Administrator, and Deborah Reynolds, Administrative Assistant for Payroll as Privacy Information Custodians for an indefinite term expiring upon resignation or replacement. David Williams, Town Administrator, Rick Thompson, Police Chief, Tim Morrissey, Fire Chief, Ed Wagner, CMD Director, to the Public Safety Committee, each for an indefinite term expiring upon resignation or replacement. Jonathan Dows to the Agricultural Commission for a term of three years expiring June 15, 2017. And Mark Brandon to the Intermunicipal Regional Solutions Committee or subsequent naming of the committee after it's formed for a term of one year expiring June 15, 2015. And that last committee is the one that the Medfield Selectman asked us to appoint. Selectman DeSorger that was here right. in that conceptual committee. Right, and, and Mark Brandon stepped forward and said he would do that. Yes. Great, good. Uh, any discussion, Peter, or any comments? <clears throat> no comments. It's a good list. Uh, so I would move for approval of those appointments that David just read as uh, listed here. Okay. And I guess I'll second. Um, we don't have Paul back yet on the line, unfortunately. Um, but I don't think any of these appointments, I, I don't think he's raised any objection to anybody. Um, and if he had something to say, I'm sorry he's not on the line. Um, but I would second and uh, call for a vote on this. Uh, all in favor? 
Aye. Okay, so these are all appointed. David, on the MBTA advisory board appointment, I need to send a letter as chief uh, municipal official appointing you. So can you have Diane prepare that letter? Yeah. Okay, thanks. And, and David, you know, you provide us the summary sheet that shows the 35 confirmed open vacancies and the status of 40 unknowns and so forth. I, I, you probably have the underlying Excel spreadsheets that lists everybody out. That would be helpful to get at right. some point. Oh, okay. Just so it, it helps the to whole make meaning of, of, the you know, more meaning of this. That's okay. All. Uh, okay. So I'd ask for that. All right. Good. So now we're moving on. Um, so the, the next topic is kind of an important topic in terms of uh, starting a discussion about moving <clears> forward on the town treasurer uh, position. Paul is not here. I still think we should go through what at least an initial proposal was, but not make any decisions today until Paul is back to be part of the discussion. Is that, and, and it also gives people a chance to hear what you're thinking about and, um, you know, comment if they have comments or, or provide input in time for the next meeting. Sure. The only, the only thought is whether we need to take action because we're not meeting yet, sorry, until the 10th. And we, we need to have some consideration of if we go forward with an interim appointment, that there's some continuity that, uh, you know, that, that we can pick Pete's brain in the process before he well, yeah, rides I mean, off let, into the let's, sunset. Let's talk about where let's we might see. be headed and, and okay. see, because I think transition stuff could still happen before a formal appointment. Yeah. And I, I, I guess I'd rather have Paul here. here. And I don't think it's essential, but right. I think it's just more uh, courteous for Right. And we can't Paul. get him again, we think, at this stage of the game. No. In fact, Diane apparently has gone to join him because she's disappeared, <laughs> so I have no idea. Um, oh, there she is. No, no, no shot at getting Paul back on the line, huh? He's calling back. He's going to try that line. If he doesn't, he's going to call David South. Okay. But he knows what the meeting's going to be. If, 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 if the so dial good. tone is not on that one, that's not working. And we need to get that. We need to get that fixed for the next time. This was we did ask about it the last time. Okay, so nobody. Yeah, and it, and it was working, I guess, for some period of time. So, yeah, you know, nobody knew that was going to be a problem. So, yeah, okay. Yeah, well, no, I mean, Pat, you're the last one to apologize for something like that because you're the only one who really knows how it works. So, <laughs> I know how it works when it works. Right. <laughs> okay, um, Peter, do you want to start uh, discussing? Uh, sure, sure. I'll just topic. discuss. Uh, yeah. You know, this is. You know, Pete served the town very well for I don't know how many years now, 30-something years as treasurer. He's resigning, effective the end of uh, July. Um, and so until such time, as I understand, until uh, there's an, an election which would take place next May, um, the Board of Selectmen have the, the authority to appoint an interim uh, treasurer. And so we can look at that as an opportunity for the town to also evaluate how things are done in the town accountant slash treasurer office. And so um, as part of that, we looked into, uh, David looked into whether we could appoint the town administrator uh, as interim treasurer, uh, the intent being that David would not have to increase additional scope. He would get no additional compensation and uh, also engage uh, some consulting uh, on some basis to take a look at how best to operate that department because there's a number of tasks that are clerical in nature that we think can probably be done with more clerical personnel versus professional personnel and uh, we can use the resources of uh, the treasurer's salary that's budgeted to move more into some clerical while also providing for some funds for this consulting effort to go, get in and evaluate w what we're doing up there better. Um, and and I guess, David, I don't know if you have any updates, but I think we'll also be seeing additional change in, I call it up there, it's up on this floor in the, where, the, cor the other corner, right. opposite <laughs> corner here, um, in the not too distant future. So all of that is opportunity to take a good look at how we do things there. Not to say that we, how we do things there today uh, is not being done well. It's just to say that maybe we can do it differently, more cost effectively, 
and move the town forward towards uh, additional best practices. So that's that's the the Cliff Notes version, I think. And w would part of the consulting also be someone who had the investment skills and the that's right the fiscal skills to actually step in and do. Yeah, because the, uh, Pete's, the financial aspect of what Pete's doing. Yeah, that's the big. Uh, that, that of course is the big concern that we um, make sure that the non-clerical tasks, and that is the man. And we heard Nancy talk earlier, the managing of money, making sure that we're not, you know, it's cash flow management, and the town's got to pay its bills, and we have, you know, a million bucks here on the table to deal with, and we got to make sure we got the money available, that we're not having to go out and borrow the money for additional costs and so forth. So we need somebody that has that skill set. We're really working with the banks, I presume, is how that's done. But I don't, you know, I don't know. So that's part of what we have to discover. Um, we don't want David saddled with trying to move money from one account to another account and so forth. We need somebody to do that between a combination of consultant and uh, accounting folks and so forth that are already resident in that office. We have good staff there. Um, you know, there's also probably opportunity for people to grow into additional scope of whatever they're currently doing. And I think that's a, a healthy thing for folks to see is that, geez, I'm not just going into a dead-end job. I might be able to move up the ladder. So to the extent people can move up ladders or take on additional roles, I think that's all great. So, yeah, and so I guess my question would be who, who fulfills the role Pete now has of rolling over our borrowing and ensuring we get the best, best I, rates and so forth? Yeah, I, I think that's the consulting side of the equation okay. here uh, as well as rela relating with the banks and so forth so and that's part of the transition of understanding that process which you know will be Dave will have to deal with that to to a degree to help work with uh, identify and work with a consultant so I mean I I don't have all the answers certainly because I don't I don't know what goes on there that's part of this is to figure out what all has to be done. And you, and you where presumably are, are talking to consultants or have some consultants that you could talk to right. to make sure we've got a seamless transition. Right. And I mean, just so the people know, there is the, the treasurer has an appointed deputy treasurer, assistant treasurer. Okay, so treasurer. We're, covered, we're covered in. Yeah, and that person respect. has all the same rights to all accounts and passwords as the, oh, yeah, yeah, as yeah. the treasurer himself. Okay, good. So that's. Um, so, we have a, as, so we have a little bit of a flexibility because right, that right, position's right. filled. Right, right. Okay. And I also, we didn't give some background on um, what we're actually doing is that um, with the treasurer's retiring effective July 31st, and so that, fall, that responsibility under statute falls back on the selectmen to do this interim appointment until the next election is held next, what, May, next town election. So um, I, I don't know if we made that clear. Okay. That's what we were doing. And so the idea would be to appoint you as an interim treasurer and to authorize or request that you, using the available salary budget, because you, this doesn't come with a salary increase for you, but using the available salary budget that you retain the professional assistance that is needed to ensure that the office of the treasurer continues to run and that it, you also uh, use your knowledge or what you learn about that office to see whether there are some assignments that can be reallocated so that we've got uh, things right. that don't require professional attention being done right. not by the folks who are, who are the finance people but by right. others. That, I mean that's yeah that's one option and I you know as we talk to more and more people there may be other things that come forward that we want to do. Yeah, we're not prejudicing any idea. It's, it's whatever right. the best ideas are. Right, and you don't want to appoint another treasurer while Pete is still Yeah, we can't. The treasurer. Yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah. No, no, no. Right. I understand that. Okay. No, that's yeah. why I think that's why we're starting yeah. the discussion now, because right. there right. needs to be a transition. Right. Not only don't we want to, we couldn't even if we did want to. That's right. So. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, he, he serves until he's Oh, that's resigned. right. Yeah. So, yeah. Right, 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 right. So, okay. Do people have thoughts, comments, questions? Yes. Um, assistant this treasurer is for the town of Sherburn. I came here because I obviously have a vested interest. Um, my current role is only eight hours a week. So, yes, I'm in that position, but there's a lot of knowledge that I just can't, that Pete doesn't have the time. He is an amazing trainer. I just, his manuals, his procedure manuals, his training capability, the way he has groomed me within that position, 
I mean, I'm a professional. I've worked in the consulting business. I certainly have the experience to have worked for for Quag. This guy is amazing. The knowledge that he has imparted to me, but it's limited because it's only an eight-hour week job. So, David, no offense, but you're not a treasurer, and there is basically a month that we can utilize where Pete can continue to impart knowledge to somebody, maybe someone who's currently in a role that has a base of the knowledge, a foundation of the information. I'm not asking for a full-time position, but I am willing to step forward to help through the transition. But be clear, that can't happen at eight hours a week. It really can't, and I'm just being honest. It's not because I'm not willing or able, it's just not feasible. As a matter of fact, we hit my budgeted hours a week ago. I haven't been able to work for a week. So, you know, that, that's the type of constraints that we're under. I had filled in for Pete while he was on vacation and ran out of hours, basically, for the year. So, eight hours a week is eight hours a week. It's budgeted, it's financial. I can't go over that. So, if your thought process is that I would step in and fill a role, you've got to give me time to do that. Well, part, part, part of this is there's going to be budget surplus because Pete's resigning. So there's a salary line item and I think part of what we were thinking was those funds can be reallocated whether some of it goes to increase your hours whether some of it goes to a consultant or however it makes sense to you know probably it's a combination but but, but you're talking about doing that after July 31st July it's too late. no we're talking about doing it after July 1st Oh. When the fiscal year starts, the new okay. fiscal year starts. I see what you're saying. That's coming. You have that, the available funds. The budget starts them. July 1st. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So just know that, you know, obviously the foundation of knowledge is there. Um, David and I spoke via text and very briefly. <laughs> it was not a detailed conversation. But, you know, that, that I do have availability, that I am willing to help. But you definitely need oversight in that role. And that is not a paraprofessional role. That is somebody who is responsible for the bond rating of the town of Sherburne. It's not a clerical role. Nor no, is, understood. Nor that that wasn't mine. what he said. Yeah. Nor no. is mine, quite frankly, no. as the assistant They're... treasurer, because I'm bonded for millions of dollars, and I, ha I do a tremendous amount of money movement, obviously under Pete's oversight. But, it, you know, there's, there's not really a clerical role within the treasurer department. There's a treasurer and an assistant treasurer, and we are both professionals not clerics you yeah, know don't, don't so, get us wrong we were not no, no, saying no, that anything you were doing was no, clerical no, no. but there are you know there are tasks that are clerical in nature that come out of the financial departments of our town that perhaps could be done in a different way with a different allocation of resources Understood, and I didn't take it as a okay. personal All right. that was not but what I'm saying is the bifurcation needs to be made that the treasurer line as it's currently structured and i'm not saying it can't be restructured because we could all still be using microfiche and we're not but you know as it could be structured the way it's currently structured there is no there's not there are clerical functions there's no clerical role so just you know understood I mean, there's a lot that rides on the responsibility of that role and david again i don't want to see you set up I mean, even Pete and I play off each other for things that are, you know, prioritized and missed and not missed, but prioritized and need to be done at certain times. That's historical institutional knowledge that he has that neither you nor I have. Yeah, no, I don't think, um, I think we were all looking at reallocating resources. I don't think anybody was thinking that Pete's going to be gone and we'd keep you at eight hours and bank on you to be doing all that. So. We there are a lot of there are several moving parts in the office, as you know, yes. and we're trying to look at those resources and how things can be um, moved or reallocated to make sure that we're good through a transition, but also lays the groundwork for some place that the selectmen might want to go long term. Okay. And then my only other key component is, it, and I have been alluding to it, but I'll come right out and say it: I don't want to be thrown into this all by myself with no support. So. Yes, I'm willing, but like I said, there's foundation institutional knowledge that Pete has that nobody currently has, and we all need to be on the same page about how critical that is and what could get lost in the cracks during that transition, and that we all, you know, really take that very seriously. That is, 
I mean, the things that he does, it, it's, it's very, very important to the stability of the town. So we need someone in that role who has ownership and responsibility and, and knowledge about those things. And, you know, right now I don't because I'm only eight hours a week. Doesn't mean I can't get there, but. I, right th I think I from what I'm hearing from you, part of this needs to be David working with you and getting you the resources you need in the next month to make sure there's, you know, whatever knowledge needs to be transferred that between you and David, you, you get that knowledge because I don't know how else we would do it. Exactly. it it's, um, you know, even if we'd gone out to the market to hire a municipal treasurer, it's unlikely we would have gotten anybody who started, you know, was, was able to start that transition much before Pete left, you know, so. Um, we have lost a little bit less than a month, but yeah, I mean, we haven't started the process. We've had almost a month to do it, so. Well, I think David has started to have some discussions with folks he knows, right? I mean, that's mm -hmm. the, that's been how you've been handling that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, that's all I just, Yeah, good. And if you guys could just keep me in the loop because I've got other obligations to manage around eight hours a week. Obviously, that's not my whole life. So I need to you yeah, know, no, no. shuffle my life in order to fit what I can and can't provide to you guys for the future. So David, I think one thing that's coming out of this conversation is to make sure you sit down with Heather mm -hmm. during you know daylight hours as soon as possible and figure out how that, you know, bo both what needs to be done in July and sort of a longer term view of how the knowledge that Pete has gets, um, you know, preserved and, and out to the people who need to have it going forward. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I know as a bigger picture item, you're going to be thinking about systems and, and other uh, structural issues that make uh, for more efficiency and make it less likely that we're going to have all the institutional knowledge in, in one person. I mean, that's fine historically, but I think going forward, we need to be, you know, more up to date and, and right. more, uh, have more depth in terms of how we do that. Right. You know, again, we're constrained, so unlike other places we don't have full-time treasurer, full-time assistant treasurer, and um, a lot of office staff in that office, we just don't, so. Anything more, Peter? No, I think that's great. Okay, Good so. Hear from Heather. Uh, nothing to vote on there. Um, all right, town administrator report. Maybe we can crank through some of this stuff. Um, the, the town hall will be closed on Friday, July 4th. Those offices normally closed on Friday, which is um, pretty much all town hall offices except the Board of Selectmen. Uh, the Selectmen's... Um, yeah. Um, okay, yeah. Paul, can you hear us? All right, you know what? I think Not on speakerphone. Paul, Paul, can you hear us? I've been trying to use the landline here. I've been trying to call in. I'm also 651 number, uh, David, on your cell phone, and so I've left messages. Paul, you're on the speaker Paul, on at the meeting, so um, if you want to listen, we're, David's going through the town administer report. Okay, what, what did we do on the treasurer? Mm -hmm. uh, on the treasurer, we talked to the folks who are here about uh, the idea of uh, David being an appointment uh, eventually to treasurer with uh, him working with uh, Heather Peck and with the um, cons with consultants to assume the responsibilities of that office in a way that makes sense for the town. And I think we're going to discuss it further on July 10th when you're here. Okay, so was action taken or, or not? No, there was no action taken. It was just a general discussion. Okay. Okay, so town administrator report, Dave. Uh, the, as I was saying, the town hall cl will be closed on Friday, July 4th. Those offices normally closed <clears throat> on Friday, um, which are all, all offices of town hall except um, the selectmen's office. Uh, will be closing on Thursday at 1 p.m. And basically the reason for that is the, those people who normally have an eight-hour holiday but their office is closed, um, they're taking half on Thursday and half on Friday. The Selectman's office will stay open for the full day on Thursday. Um, I'll give you a better accounting of that from individual offices, what they're doing as I find out what 
what individual offices are doing. Um, but I just wanted to say the town hall, um, as far as the Board of Selectmen's office, will be open all day on Thursday before the 4th of July for farm pond stickers or, or whatever. Okay. Um, and then I updated the meeting calendar, um, which I distributed to you. And then for upcoming meeting topics. And our next meeting is July 10th. Is that, is that right, David? Yeah, we can set that now. Okay. Thursday, July 10th, 6 p.m. Um, for upcoming meeting topics, I had public safety committee charge. Um, and then looking at that expense policy that we had um, discussed con conceptually, I think it was at the last meeting. And we have Leland Farms now coming back on the 10th and, and we should put the treasurer transition on there too yeah we have to i notice your, your next week is on vacation david so that does make it really tight in terms of this transition we gotta you right. got you gotta get geared up to that before the 10th and and uh maybe part of the 10th is give us a report on how the transition is going mm -hmm. are there any other topics for that day uh well leland was the other one right that might be enough <laughs> And just other if appointments. You have additional additional there will appointments, be other appointments. Right? Yeah, They're, they've already come in, but I didn't adjust. Okay, and some, that would the be documents. a warrant. We'd have a warrant as well, right? Yeah. And there would be a warrant on that day. Yes. Right. Does that look good? That looks good. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that's it for the. Okay. My report. That's the administrative report. Any. Um, Selectman reports from anybody? No. No. Paul? No. Sounds like a no. Okay. No. Um, and uh, we don't have any minutes to approve, so we'll, I'll, I'll uh, entertain a motion uh, on the warrant or whatever discussion we need to have on the warrant. There's two warrants actually this time. So there's a there's a warrant. There's our regular warrant. Uh, for payroll and for invoices and then there is an anticipatory warrant for the next fiscal year uh, which we would approve and then the it would be paid the beginning of the next year uh, which is next week and that's for um, I think it's for teacher uh, or school uh, payroll that's right some expenses some teachers elect to get paid over 12 months so this is the remaining two months of their 12 month pay. Yeah, and I just don't know if there's anything else year. on here. I think it's just school. Yep. Yep. And so that's a, that's in the amount of 85,848 out of next year's budget and today we've got 558,562 and 52 cents out of this year's budget. Um, and so uh, David, have you reviewed these? Yes. Okay. And um, there were a couple of items that we're still going to question and may hold a check on one of those items. Okay. All right. Anything? So, so no, I have no other. There's some signatures needed. So I would move to approve both warrants subject to the missing signatures getting there from certain department heads. Okay. Paul, if you're there, do you have a second? Second. Okay. Any uh, further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Durant says so it's aye. Okay. All right. And so um, we'll we'll can, sign. we can sign those. And David, you'll follow up on the withholding of the check. Yes. All right, good. Terrific. And, w and one of the things David has tried to do, and uh, I think it's, you know, we're making progress on it, is to systematize the, uh, the way the warrants come in and the support for invoices and so forth and just make sure everything is, uh, is done in a way that there are the checks and balances that need to be uh, present for uh, spending town money so uh, sometimes when David suggests we hold something it's because he's got follow-up questions or something wasn't supported in a way that he was comfortable with okay so um, is there anything else on the agenda I don't think there's anything else on the agenda the next meeting would be an evening meeting Thursday July 10th and uh, do we have a motion to adjourn so moved second uh, all in favor of adjourning Hi. Hi. Paul, sorry about the uh, remote participation. It didn't really live up to uh, expectations, but I appreciate your time. I know you're calling in from uh, your travels, and uh, you had some personal time planned for today, and I appreciate that you took 
uh, an hour and a half or so that day and uh, devoted it to the meeting. So thank you. Thanks, Mike. All right. Take yeah. care. Thank you. Power off. <laughs>